This is the Super 530D. Developed by Matra in France, it is a medium-range, semi-active radar-guided air-to-air missile. No longer in service with France, it is still in service with Egypt, Greece, and India, but was also used by many nations around the world, such as Brazil, Iraq, Qatar, and more, including some neo-fascist group in Italy. Yeah, more on that later. But for now, we won't just be talking about the Super 530, because we're going back in time to the mid-50s and 60s to talk about its predecessor, the R-530. The development for the missile began in the mid-50s. Unlike the Super 530's streamlined structure, the R-530 has four delta wings and four triangular control surfaces in its rear making it a very 50s looking missile. It is guided by its semi-active radar guidance seeker. This means it needs the aircraft's radar to guide the missile all the way to its target. But it can be interchanged with an infrared guided seeker, giving it limited all aspect capability. This means it can be useful in a head-on engagement, but can perform much better when the target's engine is in view. The missile is propelled by a solid fuel rocket engine. It has a range of approximately 9.3 miles or 15 kilometers and can be reduced to approximately 1.8 miles or 3 kilometers with its infrared seeker equipped due to the limitations for the time. It is also equipped with a 60 pound or 27 kilogram warhead. The R-530 was mounted on the Mirage 3 and Mirage F-1, but was also on the Vought F-8 Crusader for the French Navy. They were mounted where the radar-guided AIM-9Cs would be, and I am just now finding out there are radar-guided AIM-9 Sidewinders. The French Navy would decommission their R-530s in 1991 due to their poor reliability. If you're familiar with the story of the AIM-7 Sparrow during the Vietnam War, then you should know that they performed quite poorly against North Vietnam's smaller and maneuverable MiGs, and the R-530 was no different. As revolutionary as they were, these missiles during that era were meant to target large bombers, not small fighters. During the Six-Day War, when used by the Israelis, it was seen as unreliable due to the ground clutter from the Serrano radar on their Mirage 3s, as it needed a radar lock to be launched. Not only that, the missile had a long warm-up time, but the Israelis would be the first to score a kill with the R-530 in 1965 against an Egyptian MiG-19. As of today, there are no operators of the R-530. They would be very obsolete otherwise. The Mirage F-1 would be manufactured in 1966, and the need for a new missile was ordered by the French government, and Metra was awarded a contract to develop such a missile in 1971. That missile being the Super 530F. It is solely a semi-active radar guided missile with a much more streamlined design, resembling the United States Navy's standard missiles. It has an improved range of 15.5 miles or 25 kilometers and a 66.1 pound warhead or 30 kilograms. Development would finish in 1979 and these would be shipped off to Iraq. During the Iran-Iraq war, Iran would use the Super 530F with success, including against two Turkish F-100s with both pilots surviving and being sent back to Turkey. The country of Qatar would also get their hands on the Super 530F, but after they were done with them, they would sell their stock to Spain. But it is a possibility that one of them may have ended up in the hands of a neo-fascist group in Italy, because in 2019, a 530F with a live warhead inside of a container was found by Italian authorities when the neo-fascist property was raided. The container was listed in Qatar, and the Qatar government said that they were working closely with Italy to figure out how such a thing happened. As of today, I can't find anything else on this case. Oh, and that's not all. 
A Super 530 was mistakenly shipped to a defense contractor known as Drake International at Lakeland Linder Airport in Florida. The missile did contain a live warhead and the airport had to be evacuated. In 1979, development began on the Super 530D for the French Mirage 2000. The missile would be commissioned in 1987 with slimmer fairings and a longer body, but keeping the same warhead. The improvements to the 530D was its range, being 24.8 miles or 40 kilometers. It was also given a Doppler seeker to help assist targeting low-flying aircraft. While I can't find any combat history for it, the last French Super 530 was fired on March 1st of 2012. Okay, let's take a look at the operations of the missile. Two Mirage F1s are taking off to deal with an evil P3 Orion, doing bad things. They're both armed with R530s. The flight leader will be taking the shot today while the wingman covers them. While suffering through the Serrano's radar, the pilot tries to acquire the P3. Eventually, they do. Achieving a lock in single target track mode, the Serrano radar on the Mirage F1 is capable of track while scan, but it cannot guide the 530 family. That's more suited for active radar missiles like the F-14's AIM-54 Phoenixes. Once within parameters, a green dot should appear on the Mirage's HUD, letting the pilot know, accompanied with a continuous tone. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you might like the video I have on the AIM-120 AMRAM. For now, I will see you next time. Stay safe.